Hey everybody, welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz. I'm Jeff Antoniak. So today, I want to talk about modal jazz a little bit. This, this is a really sort of confusing thing for a lot of people that are just getting into it, and it's actually a little difficult to play. You know, the lead-in song, a song of mine called Mr. No Bones that some of you have heard 136 times, uh, is uh, sort of at its heart a modal jazz tune. So we're going to be talking about this kind of stuff today. Uh, I really hope to sort of explode some myths and give you three really strong paths forward to understanding this and getting better. And kind of no matter the level that you're at, even semi-pros are going to get something out of this, I think. Now, before we jump in, I know some of you in 2020 have noticed that a bunch of the Digging Deeper jazz videos of the you know previous 135, a bunch of them have disappeared from YouTube. Yes, that is true. There's about 15 on there that we're keeping on. And of course, the, the free videos are going to keep coming out every week as this one is. You're always going to keep getting the new ones. The idea of taking a lot of the existing ones off is that they weren't really made to live on YouTube forever. We moved all those inside Jazzwire, our subscription website. So of course, I'd love to work with you there. The idea is I get endless emails, and I love the emails, but there's been hundreds and hundreds. Hey Jeff, I just discovered you, video 79, where should I start? Should I start at video number one? Or hey, have you done triad pairs on such and such? Or hey, talk to me about half diminished bebop scales. Um, these videos aren't in a particular order. I do them as they come to me, right? They are not meant to be in an order. They're not meant to be a series that someone works through. That's what we do at Jazzwire. Now at Jazzwire, you can search for these elements. You can talk to me every day and ask those questions. So at Jazzwire is the best place to find those videos in a totally organized fashion. So I hope I'll see you there. Use the code digging spring, by the way, to save some money on the way in. Um, but as I said, these videos are going to be free every week, so no worries about that. Okay, let's get into modal playing. So um, it, just that right there is sort of a scary scientific sounding word. Modal playing, to keep it very simple, is or, or a modal composition is a song that uses one tonality or one scale, either for the whole song or for at least a long period of time. Famous modal songs are So What? and Impressions. So What by Miles Davis, Impressions by John Coltrane, both based over the same form, and we're going to use So What as, as a bit of an example today. So that's what it is. When you flip through the real book or a jazz composition book, you'll see tons of chord changes, different chord changes over every measure. This is this was actually sort of a uh, reaction to that. Um, you know, the, the, the musicians in the late 50s, early 60s started saying, look man, too many chords already. I want to do something different. That's how Miles kind of put his stamp on things a little bit. It's like, yeah, you guys are doing 100 chords. I'm doing one chord. What do you think of that? Very interesting. So it does relate to impressionist uh, painting or minimalist painting or impressionistic music in classical music. So it's interesting how different art forms have similar uh, similar things using you know the foundations of whatever the art form is. So okay, so that's one of the biggest things. That's the definition. Right, so um, so let's do that. Let's actually start. I'm going to turn to the piano for a second and play something that I think will sound very familiar. The chords uh, for so what, and you can see them on the sheet here. So the opening chords to the song, So What? So one of the first questions people ask is, well, what is the mode? Okay, there's a scale. Well, which one? I've heard of hundreds of different scales. Well, that depends on the composition. So a lot of us know that So What? is famously made from the Dorian scale. It starts off in D Dorian. Uh, the D Dorian scale happens to be the white notes on the piano. So if you could see what I was doing there, every note I played was one of the white notes on the piano. That just luck of the draw happens to be the D Dorian scale. Okay, fair enough. So how would you know that? I didn't know that as a young player. I had first couple solos I played on this song, I think must have been pretty terrible until someone said, yeah, dude, uh, Dorian scale. And by the way, here's the scale. Okay, now improvise with that. So um, it doesn't always say at the top of the piece of music what the scale is. How do we know? Two ways to know. One, ask someone smarter than you. Okay, if no one like that is around for the moment, here's what you do. Look at the song. So now if you look at the piano voicing, item number one on the sheet, you see D minor seven. So what kind of D minor chord has all those notes in it? 
So that's sort of the question you ask. You start analyzing. What sort of D minor situation has all these notes? Huh, no sharps, no flats. Wonder what kind of D minor scale that is. So if you have the background to know, you come up with the scale that's right there in item number one, the D Dorian scale. So number one is ask someone who knows better. Of course, that's what I do all day long in my teaching and at Jazzwire. Number two is you can analyze for yourself. That's how I find out these days. Hey, someone gives me a new song, uh, sends it to me. We're going to play this on a concert, you know, in uh, Colorado next week. I don't have a time, time to ask anybody about their original composition. So that's what I do. I look at the bass line. I look at any piano voicings, the horn parts, the melody. And usually that melody tells me what the mode is. So that's one of the biggest things to do. Now, the second part, this happens to everybody, including some pretty good players, is we get lost because there's just an ocean of one tonality, D minor forever. If you get so what up on your iReal Pro or look at the chord changes for so what, it's just endless, endless, endless D minor. And so people just start meandering and blah, 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 you know, just getting lost where they're at. And it just sounds like a mess, right? That, that idea of sort of meandering through a modal tune. Yeah. And so the biggest way to fix this, this is item number two here, is you have to stay with four measure phrases. Most, most, most modal songs stay with four measure phrases. That's a question for you to answer for yourself, though. This modal song, what is the phrasing? Is it eight measure phrases, four measure phrases, six measure phrases? You have to figure that out. 9.9 .9 out of 10 times, it's going to be uh, four and eight measure phrases. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to improvise over just endless D minor, but I'm going to stay organized because what I'm going to do is play strong four measure phrases. What does that mean? Does that mean I'm going to play for four measures? It does not. A strong four measure phrase is to play for three measures and stop. A strong sentence has a period at the end and a little silence for you to listen to what I just said and for me to get a bit of air. <sighs> like that one, right? So uh, yes, a sentence requires space at the end of it. A phrase requires you to leave space. So that's where people get screwed up. They don't leave the space and it has to be in the fourth measure. Give it a try. I'm gonna give it a try right now. So that sounded pretty organized, right? I sounded in control. Each of those little phrases that I played sounded like it made sense. I made a statement, I had a period at the end, I left some space so you could understand. Yeah, I meant that, I just said that. What do you think? How many times did I just do that? Maybe listen back, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a second. Okay, so uh, I did it four times. I played four phrases. How long were my phrases? Four measures each. So I just played 16 measures. 16 measures, that's a lot of D minor to get lost in. Most novice players would be super lost about three measures in, frankly, as was I when I started doing this stuff. So this is the biggest thing you can get. Item number two from the video today is stay with those four measure phrases. You have to stay with them. Most of us, I'll tell you, I've heard this hundreds of times, will play too long. You'll play four, three measures, four measures. Around five measures, you start running out of air or running out of ideas if you're a piano player. Then you stop, and then you get anxious, like, oh, I should say something again. Then you start again, and you have no clue where you're at. After your first phrase, you're lost. I've seen it a lot. I've done it a lot. So this is going to be a game changer for you. So now the last item on the sheet that I want to talk about is how to, like, what to do. The, 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 we're given a scale. It's like me giving you the alphabet and saying, great, speak to me. I'll give you an alphabet from a language you don't know. And, and just imagine that from this collection of characters or letters, you can create language and grammar and syntax and everything. Nah, can't do it, right? So that's like me giving somebody a D Dorian scale and saying, here, great, give me melodies. Okay, so some of us are more advanced in that area 
uh, or not. But for a lot of us, we just meander up and down the scale. We just say letters from the alphabet that we can see in front of us and hope for the best, right? So I hear a lot of this kind of playing from novice players. Yes, because we haven't been given good guidance. So here's what I want you to do is bring some structure to what's going on, right? Bring a little structure to that scale. Don't just imagine that going straight up and down is going to be too helpful. It's frankly not very. So there's a million ways we can do this. And again, this is the stuff I would want to work with you personally on. That's how we do it at Jazzwire is I get to hear you play a whole bunch. So, um, so just not knowing who you are and where you're at, a structure that I have in mind is what we see here, item number three on the sheet. And this simple structure is taking the scale and playing it in, in thirds. I'm playing the first note and the third note. Then I play the second note and the fourth note. So that's a great thing to practice anyway, scales and thirds. So it's the, uh, just a regular D scale and third sounds like this. <laughs> There's structure, right? You may not know what to call that. Perhaps you've never heard that. You didn't know that was called a scale in thirds, but you could hear a structure, a stair step kind of thing, right? There's structures I see all day long in the world. I don't know what to call them, but I understand. Ah, somebody organized that. Ah, there's some math behind that. Ah, there's a smart person's brain behind that. So you can hear that there, right? So something as simple as that. How about if you improvise just with scales and thirds? I'm going to give it a try here. I'm going to play 16 measures using good phrasing, four measure phrases, meaning I'm going to rest in the fourth measure. And I'm going to use just, just scale notes that are a third apart. I'm going to skip a note in between. I can go up. I can skip a note and go up a third. I can skip a note and go down a third too. Let's, let's see what this sounds like. So I tried not to have any other fancy stuff going on aside from playing only notes from the D Dorian scale, only solid four measure phrasing, very simple phrasing, and then the idea of using notes that are a third apart. Now, of course, this may take some practice on your instrument to get your fingers going to the right place. But I promise you, if you spend an hour or two, like if you're really a beginner at this sort of stuff, an hour or two from now, you're going to be playing good modal solos. For those of you that have practiced some scales and thirds, you're, you've got this ready to go. So now what you start doing is making music from it. So frankly, I just started playing a scale in thirds and decided, well, you know, I'm sort of running out of a phrase. I'm going to stop here. Okay. What do I hear next? Well, I played an ascending line the first time. Maybe I'll try coming down the second time. Using very simple thoughts. There was nothing amazingly, brilliantly, professionally artistic about the things I was thinking or the things I was doing there, yet it sounded in control and it sounded good, right? Making good music there. So three ideas about playing modal music. How do we tell what mode we're in? The second thing, um, being the phrasing. Let's not get lost as we're playing this stuff. And then the third thing, introduce some sort of structure to give, uh, to, you know, to let everything sort of gel together as you get going. And as you get used to these three things, you've got a huge platform to jump forward from there. So I hope that was really helpful. Please share this with friends of yours. There's a lot of folks out here that could uh, use this information. Thank you for tuning in to Digging Deeper Jazz. And uh, next week, I'm heading out to San Diego, Pomona. Some of you have heard me talk about this in California. Two in-person appearances I'm doing. I'd love to see you there. If you're free, if you're interested, please check out the events page. And uh, I'd love to see you in California. If not, see you on Jazzwire. Take care.